the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Featuring site publishers Carrie Murdoch and Josh McQuistian, along with videographer Eddie Radosevich. It's the unofficial 40 on Soonerscoop.com. Welcome back. It is another episode of the Unofficial 40. Uh, Join with the entire crew once again. Carrie Murdoch here with you. Uh, Josh McQuistian, uh, Eddie Radosevich, and uh, Bob Prisbillo. And then we've got, uh, did we say Josh McQuistian? I've got a hundred things going on right now. I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, Josh, welcome back to the Unofficial 40. It's good to have you. Yeah, you got me. I was the first off the list. I was pretty excited about today. Uh, so you've been out and about doing all kinds of stuff. Eddie Radosevich is live. Uh, that's right. He's got uh, a pretty sweet blue Masters hat on that I haven't seen before. Did you Brand new. That? Yeah. All the way from Augusta, Georgia. I like that one. It's a good one. Blue? Is blue allowed? I thought they all had to be green. Light blue. No, they have all different it, kinds it of colors. It looks like PC West, Josh. <laughs> yeah, yeah he is. He's came, wrapping the this dub. Came straight, I, I from, uh, straight from the clubhouse. So well, it wasn't I mean, gotten during the Masters. It was th- that was purchased non Masters. No, okay. it was purchased during the Masters. Okay, I just hadn't. I was going to say that would have made it more special. Yeah, I hadn't picked it up yet. No, they have green and purple, and they have every color under the rainbow. Yeah, I think I've got a green one and a blue one and a red one and a silver one. Yeah, they have all sorts of different colors. You got any shirts? Any pull? Any hoodies? Any pullovers? Not any, any new ones. Zips? I have a I have a shirt, but I don't have any new ones. So anyway, uh, Eddie, I say Eddie is alive because he started his new venture as a morning radio host. It's been... Doing okay, champ? Yeah. It's early. 4.45. Three that days. Al- when that alarm clock goes <laughs> Call off. Call me after four <laughs> years, all right? Yeah, it, it's early, though. Will you be more surly today? I don't think so. Maybe if... Eddie, what... what- what has the schedule been? Like, what time are you going to bed? What time did you <laughs> used to go to bed? What time are you getting up as opposed to when you used to? Uh, I, I, I usually got up around, like, 9.15, 9.30-ish. But I've been getting up around 4.45 and trying to go to bed by 10. 10 is usually... Okay. Try and be in bed by 10, probably falling asleep by, like, 10.30. Guess what? The Thunder plays 9.30 start times when they play out the West Coast during the regular season. <laughs> yeah, I probably won't be watching many of those. <laughs> Sometimes you have to when you're ne- only one of two people that watch games well, by, on your show. By the end of next season, or by the start of next season, or by the middle of basketball next year, they'll probably be so bad that I won't even care. You don't think you'll be fired by that time? No, that's true, too. <laughs> For not showing up? I think up. say, which happens first? The Thunder or lottery team or Eddie is fired with cause? <laughs> with cause. Well, with... From which job? Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> that The thing about it is, is I mean, I, I guess... There's odds on favorite would be to be fired before the Thunder get into the lottery because they won't be playing for the next, what, three months, four months. Uh, well, there's, also the, the, there's also the option of you just quitting, just saying, this is bullshit, I'm not doing this. I don't know if that would be the best decision for me. Uh, <laughs> if I could figure out a way to get paid and still do it, I might. Your family has got high expectations. Is that what you're saying now? Yeah, I guess so. With Eddie's new venture, I I think everyone, or I I doubt everyone knows, I'm a huge 80s movies fan. I think Top Gun is well established as a movie of mine. I'm also a big over the top fan. Yes, it's a good movie. I feel like when Eddie goes from the podcast where he can really say anything he wants to say, really is liberal with that ability. And then can has to go to an FCC regulated radio station. Eddie, is there like, do you have to have flip you the hat around? Up? Yeah, have you almost slipped up? No, I. I mean, I. I I've would done enough radio s- that I know that there's a difference. Yeah, but you're on all the time now, and you can get you get in. in <laughs> look, I almost do it. I almost do it. Like I, I get a sh- here and there. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, stop dropping f bombs on this podcast. It's for your own. Can good. I just get them out right now? <laughs> no, I don't want to. Look, I have a morning show too. I got a, I got a lot of stuff to do. Editing this podcast is not high atop my list of priorities. Well, that hurts. Well, editing editing Bo- for f bombs for no reason. Fair enough. Well, I mean, if he laughed at all, like if he got them all out in like a thirty second span, you could just it could just I'm be just one. Saying, one just, anytime you're in front of a mic, just stop saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. 
The irony is strong. Look, I'm I'm a professional here. This is what am I oh. twelve <laughs> years into this thing of doing a full time show. I can handle myself. I'm just trying. I'm looking out for Eddie. I uh, I blacked out. What? <laughs> what are you doing? Is there is updating. there a big commitment happening no, that we don't know about? I've been updating golf. What's going on in golf? OU is uh, not doing well today in the final round of the. Well, the top uh, the five regional. go. What does it matter? Eh, you want to win the regional on your home course. I mean, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But they're going to Karsten Creek anyway. Yeah, they are. But I mean, you don't want to. Two under for the day as a team is not good. Are, have they fallen? What? Where are they sitting on the leaderboard as a team? They are tied with Brigham Young right now. Okay. Well, the Mormons. The you don't want to lose to them. You know what's funny is if you know BYU is probably going to qualify, they could win this regional. Uh, the final day of stroke play is on Sunday, which will make them play 36 on Saturday. Hmm. Because they don't do stuff on because Sunday. Because they don't do it. Oh, that's right. They don't they do mm-hmm. stuff on Sunday. They on Sundays. Yep. Yeah. That's what because the girls team the is doing on Saturday. Okay. Interesting. John Smith was always known for his high fade. <laughs> was he? No. <laughs> I don't think he played golf. Uh, okay, so... I'm trying to bring some normalcy to the podcast, which it's impossible. That's fine. Uh, Josh has been out on the road a little bit, getting his spring tour going. Uh, I know Bob and the rest of us, I'm covering softball this week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 50 and 3. They're pretty good. Not bad. I think people care a little bit about the softball, judging by the fact that you can't get tickets. Yeah, they like sold anymore. out in, what was it, like 90 minutes? I mean, it's not, I guess, a lot of tickets, but that's pretty quick. Right. Yeah. It's such a small field. I'm glad they're finally going to do some work on it. Yeah. I, 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 Hopefully they race. I mean, everybody bitched and moaned about how much Patty needs to be paid. They better raise more money for that than they do baseball and quicker. I would hope. They better renovate softball before baseball is what I'm saying. I would think that I was kind of under the impression that those renovations at Marita Hines were going to start like at the beginning of I think that's the end right. of this season. No, I think that's right. I mean, some form of renovations are going to start. I don't know. I that's one of those things I need to check into to see how much if it's you know how much has been raised, how much is left to go. Yeah, because baseball is. I think they got about ten million in or something like that. I'd heard. Yeah they they had that monster uh, donation at the beginning of the year. I forgot the guy's name. Former player. That was before mm. OSU revealed their stadium. Right. And you're just like, holy crap. <laughs> Things going to be nice. We didn't do enough. Things going to be really nice up in Stillwater. And, I don't know, has Texas Tech done a lot of renovations recently? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that they did, like, anything just crazy over the top. They might have added some seats and stuff. I would imagine that's to come to coincide with their level of play the last yeah, few years. Yeah, I, I definitely think that they're trying to... Uh, Start a big right fundraiser, whatever you call it. Right. A, a master plan or something along those lines. Something like that. Uh, okay, so golf team, you've been out there a little bit. Uh, I know you've talked to Skip Johnson a little bit as the Sooners get ready for their... Uh, final series and then they'll be playing Wednesday, right? Yeah, it starts on Wednesday. We don't know what time yet, but they'll be playing in at the Brick in Oklahoma City on Wednesday. Uh so you'll have that going on. You have softball going on. Uh Thursday is the first press conference for the softball regional. Uh and then we got spring football. It's getting ready to start. Uh let's start out with uh the latest and commitments and eyeballs and emojis and all that stuff. Uh Josh break down for us uh, OU's latest commitment. Or should we have uh, Bob since he's talked to him and did the story? I think say, so. yeah, Bob should probably take the lead on that. I, Bob, I don't want to steal it you from you. take me. the lead, yes. Yeah, uh, junior college offensive lineman David Swaby, you know, six foot nine, about three hundred pounds, and I, I think the what you don't know about this kid is does it say anything about 
what tackles are already on campus, like Adrian Ely, like Eric Swenson, in terms of how confident they feel there? Or does it say anything about the fact that Tremond Moore and Daryl Simpson are two of only four 2018 signees that aren't enrolled at this point? So it's hard to kind of gauge where things stand there. But when you, you look at David, he's four for three, which seems to be the general uh, trend here for OU to not go for that traditional junior college kid that only has a couple of years to play. You got to assume he will red, he will redshirt throughout the 2018 season and then be yeah. ready to go as a redshirt sophomore for 2019 at offers from Houston, SMU, Baylor, Ole Miss went on visit to OU last Friday was offered then and there, wanted to commit then and there, but his uh, junior college coaches at Navarro told him, wait a minute, make sure this is what you want to do. Mon- uh, Monday morning, he made the call. Still has two summer online courses to take. He'll, he'll do that between June 4th and July 10th with all hopes that he will arrive in Norman in the middle of July. So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I guess you can start saying, well, maybe this is an indication. Of this. But like you said, he's probably going to redshirt. I mean, you look at the kid, he's not you know, really filled out. I mean, he's 6'9", 300, but he should probably be 6'9", 350. I mean, in reality, he just doesn't look like a guy that's physically ready to come in and dominate at this level of football yet. I would imagine he's a guy, too, that hasn't done a whole lot of lifting. Strength as training. Far, right. yeah, as far as like eating well and getting on a... seems like... Once Tiffany Bird gets those guys under her wing, they usually can either go one or two ways, whether they need to lose weight or gain weight. So Yeah. He he actually mentioned that. Meeting uh, Tiffany Bird was one of the highlights in terms of figuring out what he's going to need to do here moving forward. And just forward. the nutrition plans they yep, have for people exactly. and everything. Uh, well, and, you know, I think at this point, I mean, they're, they're riding the Cody Ford momentum coming out of the spring. I don't know. That, to me, kind of has that earmarking of some of the things, like Josiah St. John a little bit. Like, I, I just don't know. I mean, Cody Ford couldn't break the starting lineup as a, as a guard, so he's supposed to be, you know, one of the, your best left tackle. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I'm trying to stay woke. It, it, it almost seemed like Adrian Ely never, I know they're giving him opportunities, but it just never seemed like he took advantage this spring or you it never really like they bragged on him a lot more as a scout team tackle yeah. than they yes. did as a guy that was actually vying for the job this spring or they definitely it, did that's always interesting to me i mean and it goes back for years you know when you when you have those conversations like how much of that is real this is their real impression of him you know we're not mentioning him we're not talking about him and then how much of it is we're using that as a prod we're trying to get you to see that if you don't do this this opportunity is going to go by the wayside because i know you know and you guys you guys know better than me but i know talking to people through the season there was a real feeling that man from when he got here to where he was in october november december he had grown tremendously and i think they thought maybe in the spring he was going to be ready to leap and i i don't think that happened so i don't know i i definitely think there's still a feeling that he, that's still a job he could come and take He's just going to – he needed – I wonder if how much of it is just motivation to go ahead and finish it and try to, you know, reach the level they think he can be at. You know, what's interesting is, is you talk about kind of scout team and getting a feel for what guys are going to break out. And they give an award every year for most improved or scout team offensive player of the year, scout team defensive player of the year. Like, still to this day, I don't think I've ever seen or heard coaches brag on a player, a scout team guy, like they bragged on Mark Bradley, when he 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 walked on from he was playing at Arkansas like Pine Bluff or something like that, and it was just like, and it was and back then he was playing defensive back and he didn't become an offensive guy until he actually came over on varsity and and but as a as a DB like Bob Stoops would openly brag about him like Baker Mayfield maybe it's because he pissed people off so much they didn't want to say anything good about him when he was on scout team but. Like, we never came out of that year where he was on scout team thinking, well, he's definitely going to be the next quarterback. Like, he's definitely, like, he's blowing everyone away on scout team. Like, there were no, there was no talk of that when Baker was the scout team quarterback. Yeah, there were actually more talk with Trevor Knight getting ready for the Aggies with him being Manziel, that Trevor Knight was going to be the guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, he had a lot. Of, I remember that being at the Cotton Bowl and him, oh, he's simulating, he's wearing number two and he's simulating Johnny Manziel and he's, he, he looks just every bit the part of Johnny Manziel as Johnny Manziel. And so that got, you're right. That, I remember that, Bob. That got everybody fired up. And then it was just a big, it just like they named him over Blake Bell and you're like, okay, well, maybe this kid does that. And then everybody's like, he's the best practice quarterback we've ever seen. And it's kind of like Eric Moore back. I know that's an old name for some of you guys. That it, it just became a big thud on game day. Eric Moore. Eric Moore running the wishbone. And Brandon Daniels. What a, He's going to be the next Kitty Stabler. What a great, what a great that period was Howard for Oklahoma football. Quote. <laughs> what a great period. What, are we confusing timelines a little bit? I don't think Baker was on the team when they played Texas A&M. No, no, no. no Bob was no. saying We're talking about Trevor for Knight. hype about a scout team <laughs> oh, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Trevor Knight okay. got okay. more hype than anyone than, since he's been covering the team, which I totally gotcha. agree okay. with. Gotcha. Okay, I misunderstood. Okay, But, yeah, you. Baker never got that type of hype as a scout team quarterback that, that Trevor got. Hey, t- Team Cody Thomas is sitting right here, so no doubt about it. I, now, I, Ryan I, Broyles got a lot of hype on the scout team, but I think that was more, yeah, we really – we took this kid's freshman year away because he stole some gas. So we're gonna we're gonna say nice things about him whenever we can. I would say that from just a hype standpoint, I know it's not scout team, but I would say Buki has exceeded yeah. everybody. He's way up there. Yeah, as far as since I've been covering the team, loved and talked about and praised. There, I mean, I can't really think of a a freshman like this. They were like while. Adrian Peterson is they were about the only comparison. Two and a half maybe. weeks into practice. And Kerry Cook basically said that Buki was better than Stephen Parker. Yeah, he did kind of say that. Well, he didn't say <laughs> I mean, what he actually said was that he's never had a player that could learn multiple positions right, like right. that, and it took Stephen Parker, you know, five years basically to yeah. learn how to play the nickel. But it was basically like, holy crap! Yeah, yeah, and that's been the main thing with Buki. I, I kind of touched on this is that it's not the usual. Oh, he looks good, but he's still learning. It's the different phrases that players and coaches have been using to try to to describe him that make you think he is just otherworldly special I, I was talking to somebody this week and was kind of getting into that what what's Oklahoma going to do at safety conversation and there was a I mean there there wasn't any mincing of words about it the one guy that this source is willing to bet on was Brennan Radley Hiles it's other than that at safety he there was a definite Kind of like shoulder shrug. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but that there was almost no question that he was going to be one of the guys. And that 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 I, I guess like I should know that by now, but it still blows me away that the guy's been on campus for like five months, and it's and is playing a position that he really, really wasn't recruited for, and now it looks like he's just going to force himself to be on the field regardless of where they play him. Yeah, I mean, look. All the guys that OU has recruited, I mean, the last five-star, Caleb Kelly, there was a lot of hype around him, but there was never really a, oh, he's going to dominate. He's, you know, he's, wherever you put him on the field, he's going to dominate. Part of that is because he didn't come in during the spring. Yeah, that's true. You know, that added another layer to it. You got to remember those Fresno's kids didn't graduate till July. So you didn't have that hype machine based on what he did during the spring. That 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 was the perfect combination of a – Five star kit and coming in for the spring all at the same same time. California's whole academic system is screwed up. Like it's still that way. Like kids are graduating in June and July. You know? Oh, like the high schools. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, probably helped Bookie to go to IMG. Then it probably did. Yeah, I would think so. Because I don't think that uh, the class schedules, and I haven't seen them for IMG, but. Can't imagine that they're holding you too back too much. And then, I would think it would be a very good academic school. And then all then all of them have to go mid year because that's it. Yeah. What else are you gonna do? Hang out. Got to get ready for. Uh, is it Matter Day, Josh? Is that right? Are you talking about the pronunciation? No. Is it Matter Day or that they scheduling. play this year? Scheduling. Uh, I think that is right because they played. Did they play Bosco last year? I believe so. No, they, they played, um, uh, uh, oh, God, where OU's got a couple of commitments. Um, Matt, St. Thomas Aquinas. God, oh, couldn't, Aquinas. Couldn't get there. I got you. Um, yeah, so uh, they, they played STA last year. It was like, 
no, they didn't. No, I'm sorry. Bosco played SDA. There we go. Now, now I'm full circle. I, I've come around. Won't be long um, till I'm completely clueless. God, it's it's old age, guys. It it hurts. You know, it's it's just it's shameful. Um, What's but my no, daughter's uh, name again? I, <laughs> this is old who, man Josh who are these schools? Oklahoma needs to recruit Texas more. <laughs> more Texas. <laughs> Uh, boy. So, we can get back to some of that and, and the recruiting going on. One of the big things that's that's out there and about, it's kind of grown into a crescendo, I think, because there's nothing else to talk about this time of year, is obviously the Kyler Murray situation. Well, I think that it's become such a big deal because there's a lot of people that just don't know what they're talking about. Ooh, shots fired. Um, it's not. It's not a shot. It's just fact. No, it's it, yeah. It's a little bit of uh, carnival barking that's going on. I mean, there's it, the the possibility is there, and the fact that you know coaches are not meeting with the media this time of year. Uh, even Lincoln Riley has shut down Kyler Murray from talking to the media about this stuff. So it it's just opened the door to lots of speculation about you know. The disaster that is impending that could happen. It's doom, I tell you. And Kyler Murray could sign a Major League Baseball contract and leave Oklahoma. He's got to leave him high and dry, I tell you. I mean, it's like it's becoming 1920s reporter guy, you know, doom and gloom. The Hindenburg is going down. And what was interesting is, you know, Lincoln Riley, has, he's spoken on the subject. He's He's been pretty consistent on it. He was on with uh, Ralph D. Russo on a, a AP Top 25 college football podcast, and he was asked about this yesterday. So here is Lincoln Riley saying exactly what he told us last time we asked about it, about his about Kyler Murray and an upcoming impending decision, upcoming decision, whatever you want to call it. There's one little wild card, I guess, with Kyler, and that is he's a really good baseball player, and there's a chance that he could be drafted in the upcoming baseball draft. What have your conversations been like with Kyler? How do you think that will play out? It seems to be a little bit of an unknown going into an important uh, football season for you guys and with a really important, potentially really important player. Yeah, I don't really have any concerns with it. You know, Kyler and I have had some, some good private conversations about it, and I'm comfortable where he and his family are at with it and I think he's comfortable where we're at with it so we'll uh we'll just we'll proceed and and uh certainly expect to have him it's it's nothing groundbreaking <laughs> but I do think that there is a very good chance and I've started to hear more and more that he's telling teams he will be unlikely to sign if you draft him yeah so I you know there will be some people out there if he falls down the draft that Oh, well, I told you, he's not a good baseball player. Teams don't want to take him. They're not going to draft him. Because they don't want their draft pool money to get wasted. Exactly, exactly. Now, I I do think it's been heightened. Uh, all this Kyler Murray talk has been, there's been more out there when, you know, his last six games in the month of May, he's hitting 417 with three home runs, three doubles, seven runs scored, and 12 RBIs. He had two three-run bombs this over the weekend. I think everybody just kind of thought, that he'd be he'd have a year kind of like he did last year because he's not really focusing on oh, baseball. Oh yeah, no, there were people that just flat out didn't think he's a good baseball player. Yeah, which couldn't <clears throat> be any more further from the truth. Is that a Josh Koff signifying he was one of them? I'm owning it. I, I, I you know me. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I love to say it when I was right. I, I thought Kyler Murray was just going to be a wash in baseball. I thought it was just killing time, but clearly the guy can play. I, outside of Steel Walker, who is going to be a first-round draft pick, whether it be the regular first round or the uh, supplemental. Supplemental. Kyler Murray could be... I'm trying to just think of... From a power standpoint, he could be one of the better players that's come through in the last 5, 10 years. I, you know, I've heard this... Uh, I've heard kind of like uh, some comparisons about what he could be. And what's the the guys with the Giants now? Um, McCutcheon is kind of a guy that he's compared to a lot. That's who Skip compares him to. Does Andrew, he? Andrew McCutcheon okay. with the Giants, and obviously with the Pirates the last couple, you know, ten years. Or yeah. He's been in the league forever. Um, but yeah, I mean, just his speed, and I mean, he's got some raw power. I mean, uh, he's not, you know, he's he's the line. He's more of a line drive hitter from what I've seen, from when I've watched. I mean, he's a guy that could. You know, if you bat him early in the lineup, 
he's a he's a, I mean he probably strikes out more than you'd like yeah for somebody that high up in the lineup but hell I mean he could lead off with double he could lead the league in doubles probably Skip talked about it a little bit yesterday we caught him before uh, they headed up to Lawrence today to start their series their final regular season series Thursday through Saturday against Kansas he said that he thinks he could be anywhere from a two three five hole in the major leagues he thinks he could be a, a legitimate power source. At the next level, a guy that could hit 15, 20 bombs a year. Eddie, what position do you think he would end up playing? I thought he was going to be a – I thought, you know, coming out of high school, he was a middle infield guy. Right. I thought that that was where he is going to end up playing. Talking more with Skip, he thinks he could be a center fielder in ma in Major League Baseball. I He's gotten better. Even Skip said that he thinks he right now is a little under under average – as a center fielder, but you can just tell. I mean, his speed makes up for so much out there. He can track any ball in any gap. Uh, he's still I. My biggest question with him, and it's it's really weird to say, he doesn't have that cannon that you would think a, a guy quarterback that throws would a have. Does. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It, I and when you see him throw the football, he has good velocity. Oh, great velocity. Yeah. But when he throws a baseball and he's, he's thrown a couple people out at the plate this year, but it's a different it's thing. Different. It's a different it's a thing. Different. Like I could throw a baseball really, really well. I couldn't throw a football for shit. Yeah. I mean, it was like, I mean like, you know, we'd go play pickup games and stuff and I'd always be the quarterback and this and that. But when it came down to the high schools, like I knew I couldn't play quarterback in high school. Like I just couldn't throw the ball well enough. And I think it, my hand wasn't big enough, and, you know, it's just like it just came out differently. But you give me a baseball, shit, I can throw the shit out of that thing. I mean, it's just they're two different throwing. It's like golf and hitting. Yeah. I mean, it's two different things, as Eddie proved in the batting cages. True <laughs> fact. <laughs> uh, well, so you mentioned Skip talking about Kyler, and uh, you caught up with him the other day. Let's uh, get a little bit of, of Skip just talking about Kyler and his skill set a little bit. For sure. I mean, you could always see the talent. I watched him play growing up. I watched him play with the, the Mustangs, and you could see. I never knew if he was going to be an infielder because it you got to get to put so much time and effort in a skill a skill uh, uh, position versus you know he can go the outfield. And really, he's going to keep getting better as a defender in the outfield. He's to me, he's an average to below average defender in the outfield still, and he's going to grow leaps and bounds in that position versus. Even hitting, hitting is what was really shocking to me. Is how number one, he wasn't afraid of the ball. Good hitters are not afraid of the ball. And his his approach, he really had the mindset of understanding the strike zone. Even last year, it was really I was really amazed by that. And uh, Skip also kind of just talked about you know Kyler as a baseball player, uh, as a guy that's also playing football, and what it could mean for him just to concentrate on being a baseball player eventually. That's how special yeah. a person he is. You take, you give him four or five hundred at bats. Look what might happen. I mean, this guy could be really special one day. And uh, I think Tyler understands that. But him growing up through, you know, junior high football, high school football, and the limelight's been on mm -hmm. him going to A and M, then coming here, and then really nobody knew about him. He comes out here, plays uh, baseball, and, uh, uh, and now he's. Baker's backup. I mean, look at what he's done. Yeah. He kind of went from something to nobody really, really realizing. Now he's back to being something. I think all those things helped him ground himself, you know. And I, and uh, he puts his time in, and he really, he's really focused. And when he gets his work, when he's here and gets his work in, he's really focused on stuff that he making a having a quality swing versus a quantity of swing. So I think that really has grounded him. So I, I and I think that's the thing that's in you know when you're a major league club and you're looking at him, you're you're evaluating like, okay, this kid's been pulling double duty. I mean, just the, his schedule in the spring when football was going on is proof enough of how difficult it is for him to do what he's doing. So they're thinking like, okay, well if this kid's just doing baseball full time, what do we project him at? And I think they just automatically it's it's a big benefit for him because no matter what he does. He gets projected as being better than what he is. Oh, I, it, I can't remember a time that a player has had more control over his future, if that makes sense. Like, he has, the cliche saying is, he has all the chips in his favor right now. 
because teams are going to throw whatever he wants at him. I mean, they're not going to be able to meet his expectations. They're basically negotiating before the draft with him. Basically, yeah. And and the weird, the you know, crazy Calvin, thing about baseball, you know, Calvin, his uncle works for Scott Scott Boris, Boris yeah. yeah. The and the the crazy thing about baseball, we talked to Steel Walker about this yesterday, was the fact that baseball teams can come and he he came down to do interviews with us after doing a uh, like a I don't I forgot what it was. It was like a some type of cognitive cognitive. There you go. Damn it. <laughs> test uh, with like it up before you got with it right. six other teams. So like they can you can talk to whoever. Yeah, it's different than football and basketball right. when you can't talk to guys. So, I mean, teams know where he's sitting, and you know the uh, the he knows where teams think or what they think of him. So it's it's really kind of interesting to see the back and forth. And I just go back. I, I always go back to this is a guy that transferred out of Texas A and M that went through hell. Came to Oklahoma, sat out a year, waited for his turn, then sat behind Baker Mayfield, who won a Heisman Trophy and led a team to a college football playoff. It's finally his opportunity. He's waited two years to be the starting quarterback at Oklahoma. Well, guess what? It's here. Do you really think that he's going to just go, ah, eh, nah? For a couple million dollars that he's already turned down out of high school. And that he's going to have back yeah, in a year. At some point. At some point, yeah. It it just it doesn't in a way it wouldn't make sense for him to sign this year just for the fact that even if he does sign, it's gonna be two or three years before you get to the show. At least two. Yeah. And, and how that old would, is he gonna be? Twenty two when he starts his major league if, if he plays quarterback this year. I don't know how old he is right now. He probably, probably nineteen be or twenty. Twenty one when he gets with a team. Mm-hmm. At least. So it will be interesting, but I think you can for sure, uh, if you like Steel Walker, enjoy watching him over the next couple of weeks because he's he's gone. He's gone. I mean, he's going to be a first round draft pick. Yeah. There's a very good chance of that. All right. Uh, so there's your OU baseball talk. Oh, and by the way, they're playing decent. Took two or three from Central Florida. Yeah. After uh, losing in 14 on Friday. So uh, they're five and one in the month and uh, going to wrap up. The Big 12 slate with Kansas this weekend, and probably if everything goes well, uh, say they take two or three, they'll finish in the top three of the Big 12 and on to the postseason. I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, they played some of their worst ball against the worst part of their schedule to have. I mean, but yeah, I would say it was I think more of a, a team-wide slump, wouldn't you, offensively, oh, yeah. than it was them just not being as good as advertised? Yeah, I mean, they, listen, they, you went, they, they blew leads in the ninth and the, and two ninth innings on back-to-back Fridays, or else they have two more series wins than they have. And then they just got their ass kicked against OSU. They, they I don't think there's any way to say but it. But, like, two runs or any run? I mean, uh, they got shut out the first night, 8 nothing, 10 nothing, and then, like, 9-2, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, they just they got their ass kicked. It happens. And going back to Kyler, I mean, you talk about him coming from the Aggies to OU. He had to wait that extra year. You gotta remember when he transferred to OU, that was supposed to be Baker's last season. Yeah. And then he got that extra year back. Right, so yeah. he's really been waiting for this moment. Yeah, that's true. I remember I remember when he got that, I was thinking, well, <laughs> Kyler can't really go anywhere. He's stuck. And he was. He was stuck at OU. So yeah. Needless to say, I think Kyler Murray would be around for a couple. I mean, not a couple, but he'll play next year. He'll be around for a while. You don't need to worry about I don't about think that. there's any way he plays more than a year as OU starting quarterback, though. I would, if I had to guess, unless I would he say becomes one. like an All American or something. Yeah. I think that there's a, there's a chance that he could play two years after he, I think he'll sign baseball next year. That would be my, my May 16th, 2018. You know what? If prediction. I'm his family, I, and he just has a good year this year as a starting quarterback. I just say, okay, you gave it, you gave it your best shot. It's time for your baseball career to yeah. start. But he could also get drafted next June, and then boom, Spencer sign, Rattler, freshman All American. And but you could, he could play next year too, after he signs. And Bob, then just, I think Bob doesn't believe that Spencer Rattler could be a freshman All American. Let's pump the brakes <laughs> just a little bit. Or how about OU putting the pressure on him with that that tweet after draft night? About Baker being yeah. number one, and you look at new new wave 
nineteen. It won't be long before we have another. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you got to. So you Bob gotta... hates Spencer Rattler. <laughs> yes. That's what we've got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we did, we're finding out that Bob has something against Spencer Rattler. <laughs> Sounds not personal. at all. All the recruiting fanboys are going to report you to him now. <laughs> you know, Spencer, those guys that seen a scoop don't believe in you like we do. He's a five star though. Look. Nice save. What's what's the what's the potential? Okay, let's let's break this down, Josh. And and Bob, you can chime in here too. It's been said and you know the it's been interesting cuz like the Elite 11 invites have all kind of gone out and they kind of know, I mean everybody kind of knew what the group of quarterbacks was, but what is the possibility for Spencer Rattler to be the number one? Is it even possible for him to be the number one quarterback, do you think? It is to me. I don't. I, this isn't a particularly great year for um, for quarterbacks, in my opinion. I don't love I, – I think 2020 is a pretty good group. But, I mean, you look at quarterback, and let's say I, I'm trying to – I'm going to blank, so I kind of went back and checked it. Right now he is the – Number two quarterback in the country, and he's one spot behind the number one guy, Bo Nix uh, from Alabama, that's committed to Auburn right now. Um, oh, he ain't going to do shit. I, if you're from Alabama yeah, and you're going I, to Auburn, your your career is over already. That's that's a weird choice. I don't. Auburn's one of those schools like I don't really. Well, I think Gus Malzahn's a hell of an offensive coach, but I mean. He hasn't developed jack squat since he's been. There. I think to say, aside from an absolute physical freak and Cam Newton, what is he? Yeah. yeah, what has he done at quarterback that gets everyone so excited? God, he gave a scholarship to that idiot from Last Chance U, who played he, against OU in the Sugar Bowl. Was probably their best quarterback. That guy oh, uh, that started yeah. John yeah. Franklin. OU. John Franklin. Yep. I saw he yeah, got. I, he signed uh, with the the Bears. Signed with your Bears. He yeah, signed with the Bears as a punt return. As a punt return. <laughs> Hey, yeah, in team. that role, John Franklin first, can be a useful guy. He'd be the first punt returner to be a, such a big cancer that he destroys a team. Well, okay, that see now you're yeah that I mean, but I mean as a free agent guy, he's a worthy risk. Like you know what, if you don't straighten up, fly right, we're, we've got every reason to cut you, so no problem. Has Gus but, done anything with Jared Stidham? You think? I don't think he. I don't. I think Stidham should have been better than he was last year. As much as I hate Art Bryles, he'd be a much better player under Art Bryles than he has Gus Miles on right now. Yeah, I agree. I'll never forget driving through the hills of Ohio with uh, it was me and Carrie for the Ohio State game, and the uh, the guy that called in just basically said that Steedham was going to get his neck broken by Clemson, and then he ended up almost dying on the field. <laughs> you remember that? I Didn't don't he get sacked that. like nine times? Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I think it might have been eleven. <clears throat> That was almost hard to watch. Like someone, I mean, because Auburn wasn't bad on their offensive line. Clemson was just that freaking good. Yeah, they were. And then incredible. they beat Alabama. It's true. Yeah, and Georgia. That <laughs> also true. Also fact. I mean, and the the Georgia. I mean, they just played Georgia out of the stadium. Like it wasn't even close. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of like. It really was kind of like the Rose Bowl, except that Auburn had a defense. So, I mean, you didn't even need much of a defense. You just needed a little bit of a defense. And OU would have won that game. Oh, yeah. I, if, if OU, guys, how good does OU's defense need to be? Like, what's a comparable OU unit to not only beat Georgia, but to win the whole thing? Because neither Alabama or Georgia were proficient offensively last year. They You'd score. have to go back to probably the 2011 defense. That's the one I was yeah. thinking. But that defense, the next year, that defense was bad. But, of course, that 2011 defense, we just talked about all the good players they had on it on the last podcast. Hey, that really good unit was 77th of the past defense. I know. Bam. I know. I, no, no, I, I know what you're saying. I'm with you. But I, it just, it's crazy how... I mean, I did notice how someone like took the group. someone took the blame off of Brent Venables on the podcast thread and put it on Willie Martinez for that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Willie Martinez is one of those guys that seems to free fall that never really falls though. Like, isn't he? he fails he's forward. back in Miami now, isn't he? Uh, he was. Is it? Isn't he with Hypel? I think is you're he? right. I think he's at UCF now. Okay. 
I could buy that. And, and and that would be the first one that I can think, okay, yeah, that that's kind of a step yeah, down from Rick some of the brought places him, he's I think in. Rick brought him with him to Miami. Yeah, he's the assistant head coach, secondary because coach. Rick was Florida. Rick was the best man in his wedding, I think. Or Martinez was the best man in Rick's wedding. I can't remember which one. So yeah, they were boys. That's not good. <laughs> he's not a good coach. Who, Willie Martinez? Yes. Do we really have enough to judge him on? He was there for a year, though. Well, maybe not, but it's just... He, Josh is right. He's a guy that... Was Bo Pelini a good coach? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. He was barely here. Well, Willie Martinez was Tennessee's secondary coach last year, if that oh, that's right. adds anything yeah. to the conversation. Um, I mean, Of course, they blow out that th- staff, so... Yeah, I mean... I'm trying to think of the last good defense he was a part of. I mean, probably probably that 2010 OU defense. It was actually pretty good. Just the offense couldn't put up any points. Not at least not consistently. Not 2010. Uh, 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 oh nine. Two thousand. No, it was oh nine. That was before him. So forget that whole comment. I'm I'm an idiot. Was oh nine? Was that when Robert Griffin threw the touchdown at the end of the game? No. On Sam Proctor? Mm-mm. That was, 11. That's, that was 11. That's 11. Okay. 11 or 12, yeah. That's a, I watched that game with Ron L. Lewis's family in, in Dewar, and that's when Lewis <laughs> got hurt. That was a strange situation. I remember going down on the field, and Eddie was standing there taking video, and uh, he was telling me, I guess he was in a text group, and apparently Brody Eldridge was having a meltdown during that game or something. No, it wasn't Brody, I don't think. That was the game that uh, I guess I can say it on there. That was the game that there was a fight in the family section in Waco, uh-huh. and Nila Casatati's dad or somebody got into it with somebody else's. Like there was a physical altercation in the family, like an section. ass beating. Yeah, at, between at, at old Floyd Casey, players' parents. Who would have known that at that time that was probably the least of things to worry about that was going on in Waco. <laughs> Have I ever told you guys a story about I, I was in the family section at OU Texas one year, like 01 or 02, something like that, and was literally riding Will Peoples something awful because he had like two or three drops, and it takes me about 30 minutes to realize that his mother is right in front of me. Oh, boy. She To her credit, she didn't say anything. She was very not like she, she never knew that her son she was been terrible. Full, <laughs> yeah, she would have been fully in her rights to be super shitty to me, and she wasn't. And you know, hats off to her. I I probably had had a beverage or two. You know, I'm just just a young college guy enjoying life. But um, yeah, that that was not one of my prouder moments. I, I, I felt pretty bad about at that. At least afterwards. it wasn't Juwan Potit's mom. Oh, are there bad stories there? I don't know that. No, one. I just mean he's terrible. And you probably would have said horrible <laughs> oh, things about him. Yeah. I, I have been in the in a group of people that have talked shit on a player's family and it got it went south and it was just like, Oh my god, get me Ooh, out of here. Wow. But you I will ever say his, be... I'm the, sorry. the family's player sucked. <laughs> <laughs> like he deserved it. But he was a college kid. No, I would didn't say I would say one of the one of my best family bitch moments was God, it must have been after the Insight Bowl. And remember uh Jeremy Miller went on a Twitter rant? Yes. That was about That was the night was that the night of the game? Tweets deep. It was like the night or the next morning or like in the middle of the night. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened like in the middle of the and we were going down to meet with Bob Stoops, like to have our post bowl game wrap up. Uh, that we'd sit around for like an, an hour, and he was always great. I think Dave Sittler was there, and like I, we were talking about the tweets and basically saying that OU's coaches sucked and they didn't use the sun right. And Dewan Miller, Dewan Miller, yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember. I don't remember if we showed it to Bob or not, but I'm pretty sure he knew about it. And it was just kind of one of those. I think Sittler might have said something. The, the Insight Bowl had some of the best, like, just funny stories as far as uh, Stoops going off on the 10% of the oh, players yeah, yeah. that don't take up my time or whatever. On and the, all the 
Camille Jackson and Jazz yes. Reynolds yes. and uh, that was that was uh, the dark. Ages. The West Orange Start kids. Uh, uh, Trey, uh, not Trey Franks. Uh, well, Trey Franks was one of the kids. Trey Franks was going is on, one of not, them. Not the one. It that was I'm James thinking. Haynes, wasn't it? Something like that. Or uh, Quentin Hayes. Quentin Hayes. Yeah. yeah. No, Quentin Hayes. Hayes was, Quentin Hayes finished out his career. He had an okay year. Yeah, okay. yeah, he, I did. Think he got he, no. he he turned it around and got he, his, right. Yeah, and got exactly. his degree and everything. I thought there was and, one okay, okay. one of those kids that he was just like bad news. He was a bad kid. I, I think it was James Haynes. I'm pretty sure that okay. yeah, that's I'm the pretty guy sure that was okay. talking yeah. about. Yeah, because he was just was, gone. Oh. Yeah. But and and the whole time that was going on, I was like, but Bob, these guys suck. Like, stop wasting your time. Just cut them. So oh. it was just like, yeah, but that 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 was an interesting. I think even like, didn't uh, was that the practice that uh, Larry Fitzgerald showed up to, like wearing a hoodie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we walked right past. Yeah, him. Like, it was he like was just oh. sitting there texting. I don't even know why he was there. I think to uh, I think him and Stills had some kind of relationship. I huh. thought. Or he knew a coach or something. Uh, what's his name was out there? Uh, Matt Clapp. Oh yeah, he looked like a looking like just a just a, <laughs> he a semi like a driver criminal or something. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what that look was. Like a felon. Like do, your, do you guys remember like his? Local drug I can't dealer. remember his dad or his grandfather was like one of the country's biggest steroid use oh, yeah, advocates. Yeah, no, they did a whole uh, real sports thing with his grandfather. Uh, okay, it, he was okay. a proponent of steroids, and he was talking about he'd done them his whole life, and they'd never, you know. And curiously enough, Matt Clapp failed several drug tests, I believe, <laughs> in the NFL. <laughs> Hmm. I wonder how that works. Camille Jackson was good enough to say where he was transferring. And then Kevin Sumlin was good <laughs> enough to call me and say, he's not transferring here. Don't report that. <laughs> that so, that, yeah, that was an interesting. Those, those were some I mean, as some good as that years. team was and as many stars as they had on it, Kenny Stills and Ryan Broyles and uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, Damian Williams? Tony Jefferson. Was Damian Williams on that team? No, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, that been later. Later. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, he twelve would have been his first Tony year. Jefferson and okay. Aaron Colvin and uh, man, I mean, they had so many good and and they had Stacey McGee. We talked about. I mean, yeah, it's been good. They had a lot of knuckleheads on that team. Hey, Josh, you remember because that was the the banquet year where they brought Mario Edwards. You remember how much he was like so down about the visit because of the vibe. I, I absolutely do because that was the visit. They had him. They had Nelson Aguilar. Like that was yep. a huge. That was when people ask me about some of these visit weekends, like going back last year to uh, the Tech weekend and some of those. Like that's one of the ones I go back to and say this is one of the ones that compares. And everybody because oh you had momentum going with Mario Edwards. For people that don't remember, he was at that OU Texas game that year and came away with. Kind of talking about, oh, you might be in front. You know, I talked to his dad a lot through that whole process. And he took the visit and something happened. And I still don't know the whole story. I know enough to, kind of one of those things, I know enough to be dangerous. But I, something went really wrong on that trip. And really from that point on, OU and Mario Edwards were just dead in the water. And didn't, wasn't OU like a leader for Aguilar at one point? And then he just ended up picking USC at the end? I mean, you know, I guess in the way you can say they got one of his five official visits. But I mean, right. I, I always thought it was Florida or USC. I didn't think there were really any, okay. any other realistic options. Thought maybe I'm thinking like early in the process he expressed a bunch Could of love be. for OU or something like that. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, that's one of those things until this year that it always surprises you that OU really hasn't done that well recruiting the elite national wide receivers. Like they get these, you know, 75. Five to two fifty guys. I mean, they haven't. Other than Trey Matoire, they haven't landed landed any five star receivers in a long time. And this year, I mean, two of them. So it's it, that's why this has felt, I guess, deserved. But it's been a deviation. Hopefully, none of these guys need pins. Need what? Pins. I can't explain the joke to you. <laughs> If you don't get it, then you better ask somebody. If you don't get <laughs> right, it, everybody but Eddie so. get that joke because I feel kind of satisfied. If that's the yeah, case. I don't. Eddie, you don't really know what Trey got in trouble for? Oh, oh. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's a dick wow. joke. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I, 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 oh. I literally, I was like, I could not think of that. 
could not think of what we were talking about. Bring your pens, receivers, five-star and, receivers. And there is Eddie working on a new sleep schedule that he is the last one to get a dick joke. So. Yeah. I'm usually the one making the dick joke. Exactly. It's a, it's a new day. So are you uh, like just sleep and work? Is that all you're doing right now? Yeah, basically. No time for natty light time? Or no. Or that would put you to sleep? That might put me to sleep. I. Yeah. I guess I need to figure something out. I you my to, my you grand, already have a drinking problem, so I don't yeah. know how. You well, know. my grand plan was, and I should have acted on this. The softball regionals kind of snuck up on me, but I wanted to set up something to where it could be some type of uh, charity thing, like Natty Light, Natty's for Patty. But I can't probably can't get anything going in two days, so maybe they'll just keep winning. That's the thing; things sneak up on you. I know. Do you need me to, I mean, you were all gung-ho about baseball. You need me to make sure that they save a spot for you? The regionals? For who? For for OU. They probably won't be playing here. I think they'll, oh, you're talking about softball. Yes. Oh, no, I, I watch that on TV. They don't want me out there. <laughs> You'll just be uh, tweeting photos of you getting Natty Light at the yeah, we might. grocery store? Yeah, we might need to figure that out. You get arrogant and say you know they're going to the super regionals. Well, we know that. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I, look, I'll I'll be Boston. your cameraman if you want to, you know, put something together. Yeah, we need to. We might need to figure something out over the next couple of days. I can hook up the whole kit and everything. You look down there. There's all kinds of shit. Yeah, we we need to probably figure that out. I get the shoulder, the uh, shoulder uh, rig going and everything. I gotta get some. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm confident. I'll go buy that 256 gigabyte compact flash card, CFast card, get it going. They, uh, the, have you watched any of the Driven Golf Channel thing? I haven't, no. I need it's to. It's really good. They were, they were out at the, uh, they've been out at the course filming or whatever uh, during the regional, but they got some of those small, compact, uh, I don't even know what it's called. I mean, it's a camera, but I don't know the, style of it you, you're a horrible videographer yeah i am you should know these things i'll get you some bomb ass shots though i'll tell you that <laughs> you just have to buy the equipment for me and tell me how to use tell it. tell me how to use it i know i know where the ball's going i, I can feel that out i mean are you talking like are you talking you're talking like uh gimbal stuff kind of like yeah. what baker's people had yeah okay yeah so they had they look pretty awesome though Free but flies see, or when it started raining guys, yesterday, there were some people freaking out. Ronins, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The, these oh, are the things the camera that people, people don't understand. Yeah. yeah. For those of us that work with Carrie, Carrie always suggests great equipment. And I buy great equipment because he tells me what to buy. <laughs> and that's awesome until I get to a sporting event. And they're like, what are you shooting with there? What, what's, what kind of color <laughs> settings you got? I'm like, I don't know anything. I point are it. You going, are you I going shoot. log? You going yeah, yeah. Well, oh, why are you doing it that way? Because I don't know any better. So <laughs> I, I'm doing the best I can here, random photography guy. So and I had it, to it's slow all... down buying Eddie stuff because he started losing stuff. Like we don't have a wireless mic anymore. No, we have a wi Eddie. We have a wireless mic. Well, you have pieces. Eddie's of the wireless, mic you looks like you bought piece. it as a Chrome mic. Like that thing's been through hell and back. <laughs> I really it bothers you. Gotta, you know, gotta it, repaint it. It bothers people. <laughs> like some people get bothered by your microphone. They're like, "Why can't you get him a better microphone?" I'm like that's the that's the top of the line, you son of a bitch. It just has to be repainted. Don't paint it. Literally, I'm not. It's a, it, you're gonna it make works. it worse. Just no, it's still it. works. I haven't painted anything. Like some fingernail polish. He would. He'd go get a he spray would. can. People would have never even notice. Eddie, it's flat flat Eddie, would, Eddie would put shoe polish on it and he'd interview people and hit them in the face until their face was all... They looked like they were in blackface yeah. by the time it was <laughs> make, them, make them have blackface? Something tells me that wouldn't work out. Well. You might get kicked out. You might get us kicked out. It's working on it. So, anyway. Uh, okay, so spring... High school football is coming up. Uh, camps are getting closer now. Notice Lincoln Riley is tweeting his ass off about come to our camps, which I can't believe he's going to be there. He got to take the photo, just like Stoops would. <laughs> come out there on you a golf cart for 30 minutes. Roll up, take the picture, roll back out. <laughs> Maybe that's in Kel Gundy's new contract. Like, I am not in charge of these damn camps anymore. That's Shane Beamer's job now. 
I would make I would make I would make Shane Beamer take care of the camps if I was Kale Gundy. He's done it long enough. And I'm not one to stick up for Kale Gundy. They might have just passed it on to Casey. Ooh. Let Casey do all of it. He's been out there forever. That'd be a good idea. Uh, Dad, give him a little extra money. He doesn't have to pony up anything. I mean, that's that's perfect when you think about it. But, Josh, you've been uh, making the rounds. I know we got a story ready to run today, uh, and you were out to see a kid. Was it yesterday or two days ago? Monday. Monday. Monday? Yep. Bob, Went you're the saw, only person uh, that knows what day of the week it is in this room. Yeah. May drive over <laughs> on um, on Monday over uh, across I-10 over to Brook, uh, Brookwood. Not Brookwood. Bushwood? Um, God. No, Flowood uh, or Brandon. God, Brandon was what I was looking for. It's like right in the middle of two towns, and I kept calling it Brandon, and then people would be like, well, it's kind of Flowood. So I, Bushwood I don't know. outside of I Chicago. I was in Mississippi and went and saw the guy whose name, and I told him this several times, I have been saying wrong all along. I've been saying Jarian, and it's Jarian. Um, and even I, got, I interviewed him, and I talked to his coach. People will he- hear it. In the interview with his coach, his coach says his name wrong. His his head coach that's talking about him being a three year starter and what a great player he is and how important he is for the program, all those things. And he's like Jari and or Jerry and, and I'm like this is this is getting really confusing really fast. I can't keep track. But um, it was my first chance to see him live. Bob and I had hoped we'd see him at the Dallas Nike, and he he had a family thing come up, couldn't show, and. I couldn't have been more impressed. I mean, he's a guy that I watched on tape and thought, okay, we've got him a little underrated. I think he's a four-star kind of kid. I I think he's probably a top 175 guy in the country. I mean, he is a big physical guy. He's every bit of six foot, probably 180, 185. You'll, you can see on the video, Eddie's got it on the board. I'm going to get it up on the front page probably around the time this podcast ends. But there is just a lot to like in his athleticism. And talking to him – I went out there and was kind of like, if I'm going to waste this trip and this kid's going to go to Alabama or Mississippi State and he's going to flip, it's going to be a whole thing. And that was kind of a concern. Have... I mean, even uh-huh. less than a month ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, because – and we talk about it in the interview. You know, there was a rumor that that weekend of that Nike camp that I talked about earlier that he actually was at Mississippi State. He, I asked him about it off camera and I asked him again on camera – what was the deal there? And he goes, I was in Starkville. I was not at Mississippi State. He goes, I know what it looked like. And I, as soon as I tweeted it, I realized it was going to look bad. I was not at Mississippi State. And he, and he said, you know, he's talked to Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley doesn't really want him taking any other unofficials to places, but said, hey, if you want to take your officials, that's fine. We're not going to stop you. So I, I think there is a it, – it's an interesting tactic by Lincoln Riley because he's taking some control – but he's not saying flat out, no, 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 you know, we're not going to do any of this. He's giving the kids a little leeway. But at the same time, if the kid holds to his word, he only takes one trip. And I know he's going back to Oklahoma in just a couple weeks. So th- there's a chance to, you know, just kind of continue to build that relationship. And he's really become close with Theo Weiss and R.J. Henderson and Jamal Morris. And I think that I, if you would asked me a week ago, I'd said he flips. After being there and being around him and spending a little time, I, I'm starting to think he's going to stick. I really do. He, I, I guess I can just comment on this because I've seen I edited down your your interview, Josh. But he is a very well spoken kid. I I didn't really know what to expect, but it just seemed like he has it all together. I guess well, that anytime just kinda, you hear Mississippi, you just think that it's going to be yeah. And it just like it, it seemed like he had he knows exactly what he wants to do with his recruitment. It seemed like he had a pretty good feel for it, I guess would be the best way to say it. And it's a good compromise because if you're going to bring them all in for spring spring game weekend, you're sort of forcing their hand, saying we need you to come now or don't even worry about it here later. So you get them in and say, okay, we forced your hand to get you here, but now we're not going to force your hand. You can take those other official visits because you did us a solid by coming in spring game, we'll do you this solid by letting you explore those other trips as long as you come back home when it's all said and done. And, guys, it, it, it's kind of gotten to this spot, and we talked about this, and this is kind of what the podcast was about last week, was you know trying to build momentum during a period where there's really no way to do that. And I got to think, you know, you've had you've got what two sets of emojis out there right now that are unaccounted for? One. One. Swaby was the other. 
junior college. No, I thought there's another one from earlier, I, right? I don't think that that well, was ever. Yeah, out. there's one from months ago. That's, oh yeah, that's yeah. Now okay. off the book. So yeah, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's two, and I mean, let me ask you first: two, anything change on that earlier one? It, you still feel like those emojis, that those eyeballs are justified? The second one, yeah. The first one, no. I mean, first, I, yeah. First this one's is a guy OU's absolutely still in play with. I just don't think right now. Okay, it, I need a, a, I, You're speaking a recruiting, speaking. All, <laughs> you, uh, we're we're speaking two different languages here. Do you still believe that there are two silent commitments out there? No, not based no. on the emoji eyes. No, okay, mm-hmm. not based on that. No. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Bob. There's a couple out there that I think are, but I don't oh, okay. think it, it ever got okay. to the point that Lincoln was, was claiming, it, I guess. <laughs> um, interesting. So, yeah, just to add more confusion to all this. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, you're, you're I, clear as mud right now. Uh, so here's my I would love to know what the threshold is. Like, what, is, what does a kid have to say to Lincoln right. to, make it, yeah. to make the eyes happen? Because there's a couple guys I know have said things. And I don't know why they didn't get eyes. I, I don't. I can't quite follow that. And the problem is, we will never, ever, ever get Lincoln Riley to clarify what that. Oh is. hell no! He I he does not like talking. Him. He's just like uh, Office Space. You know, uh, um, Rachel Ann, Ra- Ra- Rachel uh, Jennifer Anderson did not like talking about her flair. He does not like talking about his emojis, it's and he a, will not talk about. Probably it. a good good stance to take if you're him. Yeah. That way, you, it kind of keeps the intrigue right. for everything. Well, it's like I said, just make up some eyeball emojis if you need some momentum. Just out of thin air. So, but here's the, this is kind of what I was getting to. If you have some of this stuff kind of out there floating around, I think it's kind of good. I mean, if it takes a month, I, I know we hate it. The fans probably hate it. But if it takes a month for this stuff to come to fruition, then at least it's going to come out at a time where things are a little bit slow. And if these kids finally decide to do go public, yeah, that it'll be in June or July or, you know, when it's a, a time of the year where it could really help you, you know, kind of boost some momentum for you. We are definitely in the middle of not a, not the technical dead period, but this is very much a it's dead, dead period as it gets for everybody. In this Everybody's age. gone from campus. Coaches are probably even taking a couple month or a couple weeks for themselves. Yeah, uh, outside of the guys that are. On, on, still on the recruiting trail, hitting high schools. Yeah, I mean, we'll run into it. I'm sure a couple. But of even those. though they get to go out to their high school, come home and just yeah, you're not kick. you're not doing a whole lot of on campus stuff. I guess would be the best way to say it. And that's because OU chose to do it that way. There are yeah. schools having official visits throughout May and June, but Riley was pretty content in saying all in on the spring game, and then we'll wait till the fall. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. I I mean, if you have now, to now, well the well the the barbecue. Will that encompass official visits? No. You think now? No, no. It's well, just all because that well, that'll be in late late July. That's okay. not when the that's the period's over. There. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, you know, and guys, I, I can tell you, and I'm sure Bob's been told the same thing. This is absolutely the plan. This isn't a deal where OU's you know trying to get something worked out. They knew they wanted to hit the spring game, and then they were going to lay off of it quite a bit. And you know, obviously, you know, we mentioned the Swaby kid. Like that's a unique circumstance. Most of it, though, OU's just – because there was talk um, a couple of weeks ago that Brew McCoy was going to come in, and I know our guy Adam, we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, he talked to Adam Gorney um, about taking an official. OU's going to get one of those. Uh, big-time linebacker out of California. But there was talk that he was going to take a visit in the spring, and I can tell you that was not what OU wanted. They wanted him to wait and come in again on another big weekend. I, I think that's becoming OU's model. They don't want – a visit weekend with two or three guys, you know, yeah. we're, we're just going to focus on you. The, I think they're seeing that they're getting more out of a huge pack mentality than they are out of, oh, we're going to love a couple guys up. And even with David, that wasn't an official visit because Bill Biedenbo told him flat out, we don't have official visits in the spring, but if you want to make an unofficial, we can make that work. That's what happened. Interesting. Nice. I see, and I, I I have literally just learned something live in the pod, Bob. You you, you know, there's a reason you're here. I'm Bob. gonna cancel. <laughs> I wrote it in the story. That's in the story, I, folks. Bob has caught me. I haven't read his story yet. Bob. Bob. Hold on. Is, hold on. I've been Did shamed. I, oh, I put up that story, didn't I? Did yeah. I? Yeah. I didn't. Eddie that was did. when I was in Mississippi. Eddie, Eddie put up that story. Okay. 
I was gonna. I was about ready to go after Josh for not reading the stories before he puts them up. Oh, we all, come on! Like we all have any illusions that Josh's editing skills is just right up there at the top of the list. I caught a word out of one of Bob's stories last night, and I put it in there. I was very excited. I was like, I fixed something in a Bob story. This is great. I uh, I felt really good about myself. I've always let Josh put up his own stuff, and I don't even bother. But there was one time recently I had to go in, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know why I was reading your story or editing your story, and I just thought, oh, God. I, Josh. But, no, I believe it wholeheartedly. Because, guys, especially right now with the young baby, there are times I'm writing a story, and I write. I've always written at night. That's just always when I write. And I'm writing at night. And I literally will fall asleep on the couch. I wake up. And I don't know how long I've been asleep. And I'm like, oh, I got to finish this story. And I I swear I mean to like kind of reread and figure out where I am. But there have been times I've gone back. And I'm like, I wrote the same paragraph and the same story twice. Like I had to go back and I've chunk it that. out. Yes. That's been a damn good paragraph, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was worth repeating. You know, it, it was the New Yorker paragraphs. So I feel like I should say something on this subject because it's been left unsaid and I haven't really wanted to address it just because it's oh, been oh. kind of a private deal with the family. Uh, but I wrote that story about Baker Mayfield. I'm, I'm really bringing the, bo- the podcast down now. I wrote that story about watching the draft um, with kind of my second family. Um and in my best friend's mom who was in the hospital and I've kind of been in and out a lot lately. So maybe this explains a little bit, but, uh, and nobody's really asked. And I really appreciate that, that nobody's gotten, you know, real inquisitive about it or, you know, what's, you know, what's, what was the outcome or whatever. But, uh, I wrote about Bitsy Bonnie and, you know, she was kind of like my second mom and her family, you know, was, is, been as good to me as any fan. They, they, they're the best. And I thought I should just throw it out there that, that Bitsy did pass away. And it happened, I want to say, two weeks after I wrote the story. And so we had her funeral on Friday. And it was, you know, hard to watch a family go through that that you care so much about. But it was really good, you know, to see them kind of come to... to you know, be able to be surrounded by people that loved him. And, you know, Clifton and I, we graduated high school together, and so many of our former classmates showed up for the memorial service. Uh, and so I want to thank everybody, you know, who kind of reached out to me and said that they enjoyed that. And I just kind of wanted to, I thought I should eventually say something about it. So I'll say it here on the podcast. But, um, yeah, she is 82 years old. She loved OU football, um, and uh, she was one of the most important people in my life. And, you know, I, I, I wrote that article kind of as therapy for me just after going through that that one night. But, you know, at the, the memorial service and the, and the reception afterward, just so many people came up and thanked me for writing that article. And it was probably that I don't handle praise very well i never have i've kind of always want to move on to the next thing but it was really heartwarming that so many people came up to me and said you know they were touched by that arc i appreciate you know everybody on the board that had comments about it too so i just wanted to throw that out there uh because i think i it's probably time for me to say something about it and um i figured i'd share it with the podcast listeners too um, so you know what, if you, you know, read that and liked it and, and commented it, or even if you didn't, uh, appreciate everybody that read it and it was, it was really good to put out there. So, and it's been a tough couple of weeks, but kind of with all things like that, you grieve, time makes it better. And, uh, just maybe send some thoughts and prayers to the family who are, you know, they finally kind of gone back to their corners of the earth after spending a, you know a couple of weeks together and leaning on each other so they they need your thoughts and prayers more than me um so throw one out there if if that's the thing you do so that's that's all I'll say so there you go anyway 
I guess since I drive this podcast, I have to <laughs> <laughs> you save myself from myself. Do do the segue. Uh, yeah. So I I don't know. I mean, other than Eddie, how, how about Austin Reeves? Basketball? Austin Reeves. Yeah, let's talk about Austin that Reeves. Is they have. <laughs> I'll set it up for you, Bob, but it seems like Long Kruger and staff have saved themselves from the depths of hell, almost. They really did. I mean, we talk in mid-March, with you, know, you knew Trey Young was leaving. You knew Cam Augusti was thinking about leaving because he was so unhappy. Jordan Shepard didn't like the role that they were going to have for him next year. So all of a sudden, all these open scholarships, nothing you could really do in terms of recruiting because – at that point, all the 2018 top kids are off the board, and any that are there, you don't have enough time to build a relationship with. If you go junior college, then you end up with just a bunch of scrubs to fill up yeah. the, the rest of your roster. So they strike gold in April with Miles Reynolds, Aaron Kalikste, and the graduate transfer market. And then we talked about Franco Miller last week, and we're like, going to Ole Miss doesn't mean OU struck out. It doesn't mean it was a bad thing because they had their eyes set on Austin Reeves, the transfer guard from Wichita State, who now will have to sit out this upcoming season, but then will be a redshirt junior for the 2019-20 season. And OU's got a lot of work to do for the 2019 class with six seniors on these on this team that's uh, coming up. But to know you have Davion Harmon and now Reeves set up, that's a nice starting point. You know, Reeves is a terrific outside shooter, 42.5% from three, hit seven threes in a row in a game against Tulsa this previous season. And his skill sets just worked perfectly with Harmon. And, I mean, once he got that full release from Wichita State, yeah, the 20, 30 schools come after him hard. And he goes that trip to Norman a couple weeks ago. Then you don't hear anything. That's when you start to get worried. Like, wait a minute, that didn't make the impression that you needed him to uh, make at that point. Then visits Northern Iowa, visits Purdue, and then he's ready to make the call. And, I mean, that was OU's number one priority as soon as they knew he was there for the taking. So you give a lot of credit to Lon Kruger, Chris Crutchfield, Carlin Hartman. They put in the work the last couple of months, and not only is the team for 2018 set, but they've got a nice, firm foundation for 2019 and beyond. Well, and like you said, you mentioned uh, Davion Harmon, and you know you still see him kind of uh, sending messages to Noah Kane. Uh, so he is still obviously all in on Oklahoma, but that's got to be a good sign for him. I mean, you've still got to go out and have a decent season uh, to not, you know, you don't want things falling apart completely to where people get in his ear and we're like, do you really want to go to OU? Look where, you know, look what they, since they've gone to the Final Four, look how they've kind of fallen apart, basically. So oh, I, I definitely think that, and I had heard at points last year that, you know, they'd be I, that Oklahoma would have really done a good job of recruiting him if they could get him to stick. And everything since the end of the season, it seems like it's progressively getting better for Oklahoma. Because I thought at one point, I had talked to some people that thought, you know, Kentucky was maybe going to get involved, maybe some bigger name schools like a Duke or something like that. And, you know, I, I so I, he's obviously a really good player and a guy that they're kind of throwing all their eggs into the basket with. So. Yeah, and when Jalen Wilson, his teammate, wasn't in, when OU wasn't in his top six, that was a little concerning, but the way Harmon's been rolling with it, you just think his, his friendship with Trajan Bridges, with uh, with Theo Weiss, you know, obviously trying to get Noah Kane, relationship with the OU, the OU coaches, firm found, uh, foundation there, and that's just about adding a lot of other pieces, five open spots between high school, junior college, grad transfer, which of course has become the unofficial recruiting season in of itself. And OU did so well with Reynolds and Kalikste. And now you're looking starting five, probably Aaron Kalikste, Christian James, Richard Odoms, whoever wins between Brady Manick, Christian Doolittle, and Jamani McNeese at center. That's not world beaters, but that's not cellar dwellers either. So God, definitely. You just, need, you just need Brady Manick to become the player that we think he could be. I mean, I, it's going to be interesting to see how, how much weight he can add and how much that will affect his game over the next four or five months. Because I, I could I, be so good. I feel like he's a guy that I, I think his body would be receptive to building weight or building mass. Yeah. I, like, I, I don't and think he's, that he's, he's further along now than he was, you know, when he was in high school by yeah. quite a bit. Oh, it's night and day. I, I, I just worry about the mental side with him. Yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't make any threes on the road, basically, that last half of the season. 
even and then it kind of tra- and then it started kind of was a a waterfall or a you know a, a snowball yeah and he just couldn't make anything at home I mean he just completely lost all his confidence by the end of the season it was rough he had a rough end of the or not even end halfway yeah he, he had two different seasons in one <laughs> season basically. And I mean, the thing about it that excites you is you could see he can be an inside outside guy. He could be a guy that a, plays a four, uh, and he could play a four well. I mean, he's got footwork. He can he could get guys on his back and and you know play with his back to the basket, and he can hit those three. I mean, he has NBA type skills that are that seem to be there. You know that that could be developed. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. By the way, I was watching the lottery uh, last night. And it was interesting hearing uh, Adam Silver talk about the one-and-done stuff. It, it sounds like after what the NCAA has come out and said they're not interested in one-and-done anymore, that the NBA is leaning towards kind of honoring that a little bit, which would totally change the landscape. I, I mean, maybe it just means that Kentucky will get the best four-year guys now instead of the one-and-dones, but... My God, I mean, can Calipari succeed if he doesn't have the pick of the litter of the one and dones? Does Mike Shashevsky know still know how to coach that way? Be interesting. I I really want Trey Young to sign with Puma. I don't know. I look tr- the last what a, thing. What a crazy story. The last thing that Trey <laughs> Young needs is more marketing. Everyone hates him already. That was kind of his downfall is that he was so publicized that everyone hated him yeah. and wanted to kick his ass on the court, and they did. Like, he's just feeding Make the money. Him. Make that money. Make that paper. You want him to be the face of a, sh- a, a international shoe company before he's ever done anything in the NBA. I think that's yeah, a mistake. Yeah, it might be, but... Just jump in line with <laughs> Nike. Yeah, yeah. And just be one of many. It'll be. I, I don't think I can wrap my head around the idea of him playing with LeBron James if he were to go eight. To I don't Cleveland. think that works out because I think what if James isn't there? The only <laughs> reason, no, I, I, the I only think reason, that there's probably a better chance of that happening. The only reason they He's draft Trey City. Young is if LeBron leaves. I because I don't think LeBron wants to play with a ball dominant point guard. You want to think so? For they're, those for those wondering, the draft. Combine is Thursday and Friday afternoon. If you and there are a lot of people that check out Trey. A lot of people it's on ESPN. Like right. Trey Young's not one of these guys, but there's like there's a lot of people. I think Rivals did a story on it. Like uh, as a bookie from Kansas, like they don't have agents, but they're going to go work out, and they could or could not go on that. Like uh, uh, is it John Tay Porter? Is that the younger brother? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Like he's doing the same thing. Like he's starting to get all this buzz around him that he might go in the first round, but he hasn't hired an agent yet. Whereas Michael has, so I mean, there's a that could reshape a lot of college basketball for next year. These combine workouts, although if you're OU, you probably like Azabuki being there because you can just foul him. That's still the, the that's still <laughs> one of the greatest Matt, moments. Matt, Matt Freeman will be known for that forever. <laughs> that's still one of the greatest moments of OU season last year. Bill Self looking down on the bench like, "What the hell are you guys doing? This is college bowl." He was so pissed off. Yeah. They were doing the hackabuki. He should have taken him out. He should have. Take him out, you win the game. It was his fault. It was like one of those things that I I left the uh, LNC that night thinking Bill Self knew they were going to lose that game, but hopefully they'll use it as a learning tool. Well, I don't know how much you can learn out of it. I mean, it, they didn't learn anything. They got their ass kicked in the Final Four. What I enjoyed... What was Didn't Oklahoma State just thrash in the week after mm-hmm. that? What I, I enjoyed about that is the first... I think two fouls on Freeman, the crowd's booing because they don't understand that's what the, OU... When he misses all the free throws. They didn't understand, understand that's what OU was doing. Now yeah. by the third, fourth, fifth, they were cheering like crazy. They finally... Un- they're like, oh, this is the strategy. We're, I think we're that's okay what, with that's that. That's what pissed Self off the most is that the fans were actively cheering and it was just embarrassing for the kid. And he was the one that let it happen. Like, he was pissed off at himself. All right. Well, I think... Uh, we have any more recruiting business we need to jump to? Folks, we're doing podcasts every week. We're n- they're not going to be two two hours long this time of the year, so I'm sorry. It's We could BS. I could sit here and tell you about my arcade machine that I'm building. You got you guys know what Raspberry Pis are? This is a computer. Mm-hmm. 
No clue. It's got a anyway. It's nerdy. Very nerdy. I'm building an arcade. What is it? An arcade? Yeah, Donkey Kong. Oh yeah, Galaga, Miss Pac Man. All that stuff. Eddie, have you ever even heard of those games? <laughs> I've I've played all of them. NBA Jam. Okay. Yeah, I've played all of them. Oh, NBA Jam. I was the man. Ooh. We'll see. I'll take yeah. I'll take I Shaquille legend. O'Neal and Scott Skiles and take on <laughs> take you on as uh like the you I don't think they had Michael they Jordan didn't. in that game. They yeah. did not have Jordan. Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant. And Horace Grant is who you had. Yep. Yeah. I looked at their team the other day. You know Bob protested. Like Bob <laughs> <Yes>. wasn't even <laughs> play. I mean, it was so stupid. It was Jordan. stupid. Like everybody would because like NBA Jam was like one of those first games that was like fifty cents to play or something. Like maybe a dollar. I don't know. But like you had to buy and it was like fifty cents for a quarter. Like you, if you wanted to play an entire game, you had to put in two dollars. But like, so you put in your two dollars, you go, "Oh, I'm gonna be Michael Jordan," and you get to the Bulls. <laughs> Horace Grant, <laughs> like, how do I get Michael Jordan on here? Like, Shaquille O'Neal was probably the best player in that thing. Speaking of Michael Jordan, the the Netflix the third the, hour that looks amazing. It's gonna be amazing because it's thirty for thirty, yeah, and he's gonna be involved in it. Yeah, he's yes, completely signed which off makes on it. it Everything I want it yes. to be. None of the shady side of them. No, uh, no, this is gonna be all about the glory days. He's gonna be shit talking people. I mean, I just hope he admits all the gambling stuff. Yeah, I do too. Which exactly? Bob doesn't want to hear any of that shit. No, Bob's I, like, no. Jordan is helping produce it, or he's in favor of. Guys, it. We're not hearing about that. Gambling. I feel like right. Bob's fingers are in his ears as you guys are saying. La, 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 la. He's like, no, that never happened. <laughs> Gambling's legal. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we need to, uh, yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to build the Sooner Scoop empire now that this gambling thing is coming. I want to be a part of a point shaving scandal so bad. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about taking legitimate bets. Oh, like to not decide? fixing games. <laughs> no, I want to fix some games. You want to fix high school games. We could definitely do that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I can just hear us like three years from now. Eddie and Soonerscoop.com have gone through a difference of managerial opinions of where we should go. <laughs> Either that or you guys are going to need me pay me double when it does get legal because <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to lose a lot of money and I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Garbage time Eddie touchdown to- on a Thursday night. Oh, yeah. God. Eddie has to shave points to uh, save his legs. Eddie will get fired. No, we, not- I, you, you, we won't have to deal with bookies. It's going to be legal. Well, that's what I'll I was just, saying the I'll other just day. have to file bankruptcy. That's what I said the other day. It's like, <laughs> now, instead of getting your legs broken, they just they just your family ding gets... you on your credit report. <laughs> yeah. You can't buy a house. Yeah, your, your family leaves you. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, what, Unless you're Lucas What are Oliver. guys like... What are oh, Lucas big, Glover? Are Lucas Lucas what a Louis raging gonna... bitch that is. <laughs> She has the crazy eye. Oh my! She called him a pussy. I know. He it, brought home twenty one thousand dollars for two days of golf. You know how much money he's made in his career? Oh, like twenty million. We yeah. looked it up today. He's he's, a, he's over twenty he's million. He's made like eight hundred thousand just this year. He's won a major. Yeah, the U.S. Open. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he comes home after not making the cut at the players, and his wife calls him a loser and a pussy in front of their kids and his mother. And then she beats up his grandmother. Yeah, or his, his mom. His mom, yeah. Which, his, her which, mother-in-law. The best part about the story is her name. Hershey. Oh, Hershey yeah. Glover. Hershey Glover. Hershey Glover, yeah. We were saying that sounds like a definite Urban Dictionary yeah. uh, entry. <laughs> Hershey Glover? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's not one I want to read. It's just like the Alabama Hot Pocket. Yeah. Don't read that one. Yeah. So, eh, that's what I end the show. That's way we. That's what how we do it around here. So thanks to uh, Bob Persbill, I'll go in reverse order. Thanks to Eddie Radosovich. Don't listen to his morning show. Listen to mine. Uh, Josh McQuistion, oh. back in Houston. I'm the kidding. tension is palpable. Oh, and you can cut it with a knife here. <laughs> I'm. That's okay. You can listen to his show just if. I'll get the fired. What? I gotta. I gotta edit that part out. <laughs> I get fired from my radio show for doing something on the podcast. Just don't listen. Ugh. I'm editing out the whole thing. <laughs> oh, if you're editing out, then. If you're editing it all out. 
I'm here's what I'm doing. I'm putting a big bleep. Let's we'll go three, two, and one, no and restart. No one's gonna know what you said. Yeah, I don't want any of that out. Actually, I don't want to get fired in the first week. You know what we want, guys, on the board or on Twitter. We want you to take your stabs at what Eddie just threw out there. As you hear that giant beep. What? Ed, let me ask you a question. <laughs> with with what Eddie just said, did you hear uh, Laurel or Yanni? Laurel. If you heard Yanni, you're a f- <laughs> idiot. I heard it today. Did you? They slowed it down by 30%, and I could hear it. It didn't say Yanni, though. It said Yami. My roommate and I literally listened. We were, from me to you, listening to it, uh-huh. played it. He heard Yanni. I heard Laurel. Laurel. It's I, don't weird, under, I don't understand it. All I heard it. was Laurel. It has Until something today. to do with pitch, right? It's frequencies yeah, that your, frequency. your brain interprets. So stupid, like if your brain, but so fascinating at the same time. If your time. brain interprets higher frequencies over lower frequencies, you'll hear Yanni. Is it dumber than the dress thing from a couple of years ago? I thought yeah, they're equally dumb. <laughs> this one actually like makes me like I sat there last night for an hour. Like I don't under, I don't get it. I don't see how somebody can hear something. You've different. got software. You could have messed with it like I did. It just doesn't make sense to me though. There's some really messed up things in that file. Like there's, there's some noises. I reversed it, and it and it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like it starts with an L. It sounds like it starts with an M. It's really strange. I think I actually. You thought the podcast was done. Hold on, I I think I, uh, talk amongst yourselves. It just doesn't uh, I want it to be known. I had no idea what you guys were talking about. When this started, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I've missed something. So I Googled that. All I hear is Laurel. I don't even know how the hell you'd get Yanni. Thank you. I Okay, so here it is. I, here it is. Ba- well, I should play the regular one before I start screwing up, screwing around with things. My best friend said he could hear Laurel, and now when he changed the frequency, he could hear Yanni. So he was bragging to me that he could hear both, and his ears are super. That is a crazy. I have seen nothing about this, and now, literally, just on my it's everywhere and a completely unrelated. Uh, it's a it's an airfare Twitter feed that like shows me cheap airfare rates, and it just popped up with a Laurel and Yanni reference. I I literally three minutes See, ago I had no is, idea what it was. I talking about. swear to God, they are always listening to us. Like I had this discussion with somebody, and I are like my phone is sitting there. But I had a discussion the other day with Curtis Fitzpatrick, and we were talking about spam mail. And I was talking about all the places that I get spam mail from. Like, I started getting Williams Sonoma spam mail, and I don't know why. But, like, I get it, like, two or three times. So somebody sold my you know name, because I've never gone to Williams Sonoma or their website. And so he starts listing off all these places, like, do you go here, do you go here, do you go there? And, and he said, do you go to West Elm? I said, oh, I love West Elm. I said, I go there. You know, I like their stuff. It's pretty cool. But I just said this in a conversation. I get home later that day. Boom. Spam from West Elm. Spam mail. Or uh, advertising? Yes. It's weird. I don't, I I think don't, I don't understand how it works. But It's just like the, the, I bought my dad one of those Google pucks. That you say, hey, mm-hmm. Google, listen to the sports animal. Uh, and it just starts you know, playing the sports channel. And he was trying to set it up with his TV and everything. But, like, how do we know that Google's not always listening? I don't know if we know. It, I I don't know. I don't think we know. Like, they're registering I your conversation somewhere I think there's a California, very good chance that that's Cupertino happening. Cupertino or wherever they are. I think that's, Apple's in Cupertino. I mean, I know people that will put tape over the yeah. screen of their uh, computer. Mark Zuckerberg does that. Well, he's a robot. <laughs> I don't know if we should base everything off Zuckerberg. <laughs> oh, God. Now we're going to get Facebook ads. I'm sure we Facebook will. Facebook is not is your friend. I'm sure we will. With his uh, booster seat. Yeah. At testifying to Congress, sitting on a booster seat. Doesn't get worse than that. All right. This, well, this podcast might if we keep going down this road. So <laughs> that's going to do it. Thanks right. to Eddie. Thanks to Bob. Thanks to Josh. Uh, we'll be back again next week with uh, more nonsense and a uh, little bit of information. As uh, this time of year, it can be slow. But yeah, we, the, the response to the podca- podcast has been fantastic. Appreciate everybody listening. Numbers have been outstanding. Uh, so we'll see you guys next time. Go sign up for Sooner Scoop. Sign up. Sign up. Sign Like, swipe up. Sign up. Uh, go sign up at Soonerscoop.com. It's a great time of the year. A lot of recruiting coming your way. 
uh, camps, all that stuff. Uh, we got softball coming out. We got baseball. Uh, so it's a good time of the year to be there, be on the boards, be on the Crimson Corner, uh, where you can access us uh, any time of the day. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time right back here on the Unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Podcasts from Soonerscoop.com.